<laughs> okay, we're doing this live for a second time. This is Lunatic High versus Rogue. Um, in the Chinese tournament, which I believe is APAC. Yeah, it's APAC, not the Korean tournament. I'm wrong. I was wrong. It's, it's APAC. I thought that this was the other one. Um, I'm lost again. So the English VOD of this map isn't like available. The stream went down for, I believe it's Uber and JCap that are casting this. Or maybe this is, um, I don't care who was casting it to be honest. The point is there's no stream for me to watch in English. So I'm just going to watch the entire thing in the Chinese stream. So if you guys are like, why is he watching the Chinese stream? It's because I don't really have a choice. Uh, if you're asking why I didn't download it, it's because I actually don't know how to download off the Chinese website. And if you want to know why I'm using their player, it's because I don't really have any other choice as well. So map one, King's Row. Let's go. Um, Rogue appears to be on defense. They're running the classic misfit strategy with the uh, May Reaper Zarya. And then they have the classic Reinhardt and now Lucio. Nothing crazy here. Anyone that's watched any of the E-League Misfits VODs knows exactly how this comp works. It's very sustainable. Lots of heals, lots of self-preservation. The ice block, you got the mate, they got the Zarya bubble, you got the Reaper Wraith form, you got the amp peels, you got shield, and you got the nano boost. Easy strat. Um on the flip side, they're running May Reaper Road, or not May Reaper, May Zarya Roadhog, which is they're pretty much running mirror comps, but AKM is on Reaper and what's his name? Li Tejan is on Roadhog. So let's just get familiar with their names. We got Eska, we got can't read that. Ryu Ryu Zhang, Dean, Li Tejan. I actually don't know what any of these things say. Toby and Miro? I'm gonna assume that that's what they say. <laughs> but um, let's get into it. Off the bat, I wouldn't say either comp really has an advantage. Um, the Reaper versus Roadhog strategy, in competitive play at least, is a lot less one-sided, I would say. Um, generally speaking, Reaper should do well against Roadhog, but if Roadhog hits hooks and Winds doesn't hit good bubbles, then Rogue are in a lot of trouble. I think I brought up last time that I didn't feel like Rogue or Winds' Zarya was actually as like strong as other people's Zarya's. So in reality, I might actually give the advantage to Lunatic because I'm not even sure how good Tavik's May is. I mean, they might actually be really good at this, but um, the Reaper into the Roadhog is the only real question mark as far as what's going to happen. So the camera is like super choppy, actually. Um, do a lot of crazy shit with the camera. But... The nano boosted the Reinhardt immediately, and that's really fast. That was like a 20 or 30 second nano boost. Like the clock is at 319, I think it starts at 345 or 4 minutes. So for them to have nano boost that fast is actually really bad um, for Rogue, I mean. Like this is just an easy fight for Lunatic because they have nothing. Like they got nano boost so fast. Like this is actually an incredibly fast nano boost because like. 40 seconds, like, Tavik's only at what, like, is this a 40 or a 50? Ro Wins is at 40, Reinforced is at 90, and Unko's only at 77. So, and he's at 77 during this ult. So, like, they built this nano boost ridiculously fast. I don't know if they plan to. Maybe that's the strength of the Roadhog, actually, that the Roadhog was just able to soak damage, and then they got this really, really fast. Um, But... If you're rogue, you can't really do this. Like, you have to get a kill or you have to not spam so hard because the fact that you're gonna get rolled this fast is just bad. Um, I mean, this happens a lot in the Anna meta. There's not really much you can do about it, but as far as the speed at which they just came in here and rolled them, this is a ridiculously fast push. Like, reinforces can't do anything. Oh, Tavik actually got his ult and got it off. I thought that was a 40, it was a 100. So, to be prioritizing his own heals. I don't know if I agree with this. There's two ways to handle this situation actually. And if you have the Reinhardt nano boost, whatever, you can either, you see how Eska is only at 60%. Um, the reason why he's only at 60% is because you can tell that he just never used his ice block, which is fine. Uh, ice block heals you and ice block builds your ult. But if the Ana's healing you the entire time, then 
she'll get nano boosts faster. So it's like a selfish play, I would say, from Rogue, because Tavik definitely self-healed. But if Tavik hadn't self-healed, maybe that extra health that he healed himself might have gone into um, his own nano boost. So that's just something I want to point out, that if you're using Ice Block on offense or on defense ever, and you have an Ana on your team, you should probably not if you're going to play around the timing. Like, Aska did not use his Ice Block, I can assure you. Because there's no way that they built that ult that fast if he wasn't the only one healing. Like, even Toby's ult's probably super low. This overlay thing is, like, really bugging me because I can't see his ult percentage. But, like, point being that if he hadn't... If Tavik hadn't used his Ice Block on himself to get the Blizzard so fast, um, they might have had Nano Boost for themselves. But he gets his Blizzard a little bit too late, and then they're just going to get rolled. And now they don't have Blizzard. Like he freezes three people, but it's not enough. And Wins is like, what is Wins doing? Wins has like 5% charge on his gun or something? He's not killing anything, that was insane. They're just, they're just farming him. He must have had no charge. He looked like he was tickling him. I like the volume as low as they'll go. And it's the in game sound. There we go, 2%. So now Eska's gonna have his Blizzard. Um, Reinforce really wants the Earth Shatter here, but they know that. And Dean obviously has Earth Shatter because he got narrow boosted. So, like, they should both know exactly where each team is on their ults. Tavik should definitely. Everyone knows that Tavik doesn't have it. Um, Rogue should win this fight pretty easily though, because they have their own nano boosts. Like Lunatic High should know all of this though. Like there is no surprises right now for Lunatic High as to what re uh, Rogue has. They nano boosted AKM, but I think he got instantly earth shattered by Dean. So they actually played around that really well. And now they're just getting farmed. Okay, so let's watch this back because I'm actually concerned as to like how they lose this fight so bad like this fight In my opinion should have been pretty easy for them I think the mistake was on the first point where Tavik used his ult um, Things kind of nice actually this like little slider thing So like here this is where I want to talk about um like, as far as Lunatic High is concerned, they know exactly what happened, right? Like, they know that they use their own Nano Boost. So, like, Nano Boost off the table. They don't have it for this fight immediately, anyway. He's pretty far up, though. 70% is very good. Tavik just burned his Blizzard, so they know that they don't have that. And they should expect Reinforce and Unco to have their ults. So, like, these are definite, and Lunatic knows all of this. AKM's a question mark, and wins you assume might have be close, but probably doesn't have it yet. So... As far as Lunatic High is going in, like, there's not really much surprises. Um, Nox, like, building Lucio ult is very slow, generally speaking, so, like, you wouldn't expect Nox to have it, especially since his team died so fast in the first fight. But this combo right here, plus AKM, should be enough to win the fight, because they don't have anything really on this side. Like, they're gonna have Blizzard, but she ac he actually uses the Blizzard a little early, like, very early, which I guess forces them out of the choke. But I don't understand like how this fight went so poorly for Rogue. Like, how are they not able to capitalize on the Nano Booster Reaper or the Earth Shatter? Because they have all of these tools at their disposal. Like, this shouldn't be that bad. Like, just just looking at their positioning, I feel like Tavik is way too far away. Like, he's sitting next to his Ana. Like, why isn't he with his team in the choke? All right, there he goes. He pushes up, but he's still peeking. Like, he's treating it like he's playing McCree. But he's not playing McCree. Like, I feel like this is a big mistake, actually. Um, like, he's standing here. But he should just be frontlining with these three. Um, because his damage is just nerfed. Like, he doesn't have any damage here. Like, he's right-clicking into a shield. He should be, like, putting up walls and stuff and, like, trying to block them in at least. But even though his positioning is bizarre, like, that's a good wall, I guess. Tavik is still not doing anything. He puts up the wall now, but the wall... Alright, here's a trick, or here's a problem, I guess. Wall gets slammed by the cart. So, like, this is the cart, these are the wheels. If you put the wall up in front of the cart, and the cart touches it, it just shatters the wall. The wall just disappears. And, like, that's what happens here. He puts the wall here, but it's instantly just gone. So that's a cooldown gone. Like, that's just... 
not good mate play, I guess. I guess in retrospect, it forces Eska's ult to hit it. I don't know if it was on purpose or like the timing was just weird. It looks like he used Blizzard, like Lunatic High just used Blizzard, but it hit the Maywall. So now, I don't know why they're watching this point of view, but where's the ult out? They still have Earth Shire, they still have Nano Boost. Winds just popped Gravit. No, he has Graviton. Why is that not blowing? There it is. Okay, so this is a good. While he's Earth Shattering, like while Dean's Earth Shattering, Unko gets the Nano Boost off. But what happens to. Somehow they just blow up. This camera angle is really blowing my mind. So AKM gets a kill on the Reaper. Oh, he got slept. Okay, so that was actually a huge play from Ryu Zhang. He hits the sleep dart on AKM while he's nano boosted with ult. So like, this is actually a massive play and you like can't really anticipate this coming, but this is one of those times where like one person just clutches. So it looks like he nano boosts his own Reinhardt. So now they're actually both sleeping. Like you can't see that he's sleeping, but like here's the sleeping thing. Um, he's not in the animation on your screen, which I think is weird, but he has the sleeping thing next to him. So like they're actually both sleeping. So there's actually just a bunch of naps going on on the point right now. Um, but this favors Lunatic High because they're still alive, you know, like they're not dead. Um, Reinforce just died, like their spawn's right there, so all they have to do is walk right here to get back to the fight, whereas the spawn for Rogue is all the way back at the end of the cap of the map. So, for them to be winning this fight, like this one sleep dart just saved the round, because if they get this death blossom off, it's probably a wipe for Lunatic High. But I feel like Rogue is overusing abilities here, or like they're, they look like they want to overuse abilities here. Like they're just kind of burning alts, burning alts, burning alts. I don't know if they needed to go for this, but that was a massive sleep dart. AKM trying way too hard to make something out of that. Reinforce still is still alive, so I feel like they should be able to just push right now. Like that, this is an easy fight for Lunatic High. Winds even burn Graviton. Like they actually just use. They used every ult that fight, and I don't think that that's good ult economy. Like, even in this meta, I don't think that this is good ult economy. Like, I said in the other VODs, like, I did that positioning thing. Like, you want to only use, like, two or three at a time for each fight. Like, if you can't win a fight with Nano Boost and Earth Shatter, and, like, that's it. Like, if you can't win it with these two ults, like, plus or minus the Death Blossom, then you have a problem, right? Like, you probably fucked up. So like now, if you burn Graviton and Lucio ult, like now you really fucked up because you don't have anything anymore. Like, what are you supposed to do now? Like, this is just a straight roll. Like, this card's just gonna keep moving because they don't have any way to defend that. Like, you have to just cut your losses. Reinforce died during the initial fight with the Nano Boost, um, during that sleep dart on who was it? AKM. So once your Reinhardt's dead, like once you don't have this Reinhardt standing here with a shield and stuff. You shouldn't be dropping Graviton, you definitely should not be dropping Sound Barrier. Like, you're taking a fight 4 on 5 with an Ana who doesn't have ult, your, Rein your, Rein uh, your Reinhardt's dead, and then AKM was like, at the end of a Death Blossom. So, this is just a big waste of ults, like this is just actually just really bad play from Rogue. Um, I don't really want to harp on them too much, but like, this isn't top quality Overwatch in my opinion. Like, I feel like they're better than this. I feel like they know that they're better than this. What's going on here? So now Tavik has Blizzard. He really wants to use it. But he's, his team is just getting farmed. Like they use their own Graviton there. And the Graviton worked out better for them. Here comes the counter blizzard, which I think is just going to do way more work, and it does. That's a huge kill. This Eska dude, he's just farming. Ooh, that's a fat earth shatter, actually. That's a really good combo. So what happened here is Tavik thought that he could win the fight, which, I mean, you're May. 
I feel like you need to get more out of that blizzard if you're going to use it. They got absolutely nothing out of that blizzard. Um, I think they got one kill actually on the Reaper. It killed Li Tejan, which is okay. I mean, they traded reinforced for the Reaper, which is not something you want to do. So, when this fight started, they were at a disadvantage, like they didn't have a Reinhardt, but they were frozen. But during the fight, Eska gets his blizzard and hits like a four-man blizzard, which forces um, Kavik to go into his ice block. And I think he kills the Lucio. I want to say that that was Nox that just died. Or maybe it was AKM. It doesn't matter who it was. They got another kill. Eska gets another kill. And then while he's pushing up, they still don't have Reinforce. Uh, Rogue doesn't. So then they push up with the Reinhardt, and Dean just hits a two-man Earth Shatter on the support and on Tavik. And that's just an easy, like, that's just easy common sense fight. Like... There's no reason not to burn ults on offense. If you can get two kills, three kills on offense, like use your ults all the time. It doesn't matter. If you're gonna get a cart, if you're gonna get cart time from an ult usage, there's not really a time where you shouldn't do it. Um, if you're in a pub, and this happens a lot actually, if it's like three, let's say it's like three v six or something, right? I'll go. I need a different color. Let's say it's three v six on the cart, and you're the you're the six, right? And they're the three. And then maybe like you guys trade now it's like 2v5 and the cart's like about to cap if you're in the five and like maybe they're respawning so like there's like two people coming in but they're not there yet but they didn't die within like that same fight you should generally just use an ult like to kill these two people like the faster you kill those two people the better because you want them to stagger you want them not to be able to get back to the cart like this earth shatter is actually really good like people might think like oh that was overkill you definitely need to earth shatter there but what you just did here is you just stopped, like, this is just two people dead. Like, you had Tivik die here and you had Unko die here. Now that delays their any potential ability to use the nano boost, like maybe they could have nano boosted reinforced there if he didn't earth shatter. Um, maybe they could have saved Tivik with the nano boost. Maybe they would have delayed the cart. Like, just use ults to cap points. If you're going to cap a point, use an ult. Like, rule of thumb. That was a really big play. Like that was just a large amount of Offensive May is so strong on King's Row actually. But let's like pause right here. Because now let's talk about the ults again. Let's just see what's gonna let's just get a preview of what's about to come. Um Tavik doesn't have Blizzard because he got Earth Shattered. Unko has that. He has his Nano Boost. So, like, they don't have Nano Boost at Death Blossom. Like, right off the bat, they just don't want to play the meta. AKM is like, I don't play a Reaper. I am not a Reaper player. This is a weakness of AKM. That AKM's Reaper, not that good. Um, Is McCree's way better? Nox 66. I don't know what this says. I can't read this. I'm sorry, guys. I, don't, I can't get past that overlay. Lunatic has nothing. So they should just take a push right now and try to bait ults out. Like if Unko, Unko is definitely going to pop nano boost. Like you don't want to have a defensive nano boost. But if Winds has to use Graviton here, then that's a pretty big win for Lunatic High. Like if they need to pop this to win this fight, that's a problem. So he uses it, right? That's Winds' ult. Winds' ult, what is this? Why you do this? Like what was the point of that? You have to like see things like this coming. Um, what makes a good Reaper? Positioning, like, uh, I don't know, cooldown usage. The ability to like get in and get out, like to do damage. Like he hasn't been doing damage, you know? Lucio is Dean and Zarya is Miro. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I just mean I can't read his alt percentage. So like here's another mistake from wins, I would say, or at least I think this is a mistake. They don't have anything. This team has nothing. That that might be a full sound barrier. I can't actually tell. So let's pretend that they don't have sound barrier just for argument's sake. They have nothing, right? This team has nothing in the alt economy. They had Graviton and they had Nano Boost. Two very strong ults. But this May, this is why May is good. Like May is always just good. I don't know. I feel like May is way too good right now. They pop the Graviton and Eska just puts up a wall. And now you just wasted Graviton. Like this Graviton's done absolutely nothing. And this is the second. This is only the second Graviton that he's gotten off this entire game. So I don't really know. To be honest, what are you guys talking about? 
You guys mad that I'm flaming winds? I'm not really flaming winds, but this is a really bad graviton. And now Eska's gonna get a kill. They kill. They even kill Wins. So now Wins is just dead. And Li Jun's in a good position to get nano boosted. This is actually just so scary. Like Rogue just misplayed this so hard. Here comes the spins. Doesn't even need the spins, man. He's just flexing. So Rogue is just like so lost right now. It's insane. <laughs> Please flame wins like Zappis is on Hanzo. So what's good about that actually, like most teams would have nano boosted right there and or death blossom. Like most players would death blossom be like, oh shit, I just got nano boosted, let's death blossom just for the hell of it. But he doesn't. And like that's really good discipline from Lunatic High. Like Li Tejun just saved his Death Blossom because he didn't need it. And now he just has that extra bit of damage for the next fight that like you would expect him to have used it. So now the next fight is even harder. Um, they still have nano boost. They don't have graviton at all. They're still behind on sound barrier somehow because he just died. Half their team just died. All that they have is nano boost and blizzard. Like blizzard's about to be up. It's a 97. So lunatic high can technically just roll this fight. Like they just have to bait or like play around this. Nano boost, and he's been sitting on this nano boost for three fights. Like he had the same nano boost when they capped the second point, and now they're about to cap the third. So if you're not using your nano boost like a lot, this is not a good hero to have. That's a really good blizzard. That's a really good high noon. It looks like yeah, so he gets a kill. Who they just nano boost? They're just rolling them. This isn't even a fight. That was just a plow. That was like a steamroller came down the street and just took out everything in its path. How, what just happened? What did I just witness? Okay, so the Reaper with Death Blossom is just back there. Who does he nan Who does he? All right, so Eska pops this Blizzard really fast. I like this Blizzard because it zones the shit out of them. Like it forces anyone to comes out of spawn to not be able to switch sides because the Blizzard's just on the point. So he's just like, okay, they're coming out, I'm a blizzard. Okay, good blizzard. So here's the blizzard, it splits reinforce off from the rest of the team. So wins is stuck here, reinforce is stuck here, and then the rest of the team is stuck on the other side. So this is a really good blizzard. This is like value blizzard. And then somehow this, oh, the reaper flanked from the side. This is so smart actually. So the reaper flanks from the side and gets the two kills on this side with the death blossom because he didn't use it in the last fight. So that's really good. Um, AKM is now nano boosted during his high noon. Um, so it wasn't really that good of value. I mean, he doesn't even get the kill on the Reinhardt there. He doesn't get any kills actually. So now they're just farming them. But that was just a really good play from their Reaper. This Li Tejun Reaper player is actually really good. That was like very good play from him. Like he could have death blossomed, but he didn't. And then he winds up getting a double kill during it or with it later. That's like. About as good as you can get, to be honest with you. So MVP of that round, probably Eska on the May. I, I, they all played so well, but it was a steamroll. So like, I don't know how much to take out of it. Um, steamrolls are kind of hard to mentally like compare to anything. Like there wasn't much to talk about. They just kind of got beat, and they got like beat pretty badly. Like that was not a good defense. I like this banana culture logo, it's pretty dope. The whole point of nano boosted high is so you can fire sooner. I know, but he didn't get anything with it. So it's just unfortunate. Who shot calls for rogue? I have no idea. I would assume it's probably Nox. Generally the Lucio main calls. Name of the vid? It's this. It's Rogue versus Lunatic High. Where'd you go, puppy? Why are you down here? Chat's lit tonight. What's up, everybody? How long are they going to wait for the second round?
the dog at my feet. So lit. <laughs> okay, pause. Hanzo on attack, they do this all the time, but... Hmm. 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 Mendo's here. Mendo actually here? What's up, Mendo? Um, they're running like this weird... They're running Genji, or they're running Hanzo, but they're not running Roadhog. So this is kind of bizarre. Um, I guess Tivik just likes it. The reason why people like running Hanzo right now is because he bursts. And since he bursts, it like denies Ana healing. But since it denies Ana healing, it's like, that's why it's good. That's like the only reason why it's good. But like somehow, even on defense, he's already got 26% ult. Like, how does this happen? What did he do? What just happened that he has 26% ult? Did Tivik just fire a scatter arrow and it hit like four people and he just gave them free ult? Like, this is actually so game losing. Like, this is just a small problem that is actually just a big problem. Um, like, what do you do about this? Like, he just hit a scatter arrow and gave the Ana 25% ult. So now you're just like super far behind on the ult advantage. Like, the reason why you pick Hanzo is like they, not what they just used it for. Like, he's kind of trying to build his ult fast, but is it worth it? I don't think it's worth it. That was a lot of poke. That was a lot of poke. Like, 25% ult in the first 10 seconds? That's not good. I mean, it's not. It's far from ideal. Mendo, everyone came in here and they were like, spamming Mendo memes. I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't even, it wasn't even a Mendo stream. Mendo with the subscription, thanks fam. So they're just getting farmed and you know how like when you get when you get mad you know not when i when i get mad when i'm like yo zapis why are you on hanzo this is like one of those times you know when you are running <laughs> the hanzo and you're just not getting kills that's essentially what we're watching like they just farmed all of these people like this zarya just went nuts 70 percent on the zarya ult Nano boost, Blizzard, like life's good right now for Lunatic High. Lunatic High is in the driver's seat, but the Hanzo didn't do anything. The Hanzo just helped them build damage and build ults. So, subbed for the Mendo memes. But yeah, May got ult as fast as Ana, but you know why that's good actually? So let's talk about that. Like on offense, I talked about how Tavik, or yeah, Tavik was on defense. And he used the ice block to like farm his own ult really fast and it like, denied Unko his ult. The opposite needed to happen here. Like these two have their ult at the same time, but it's all because Tabik gave him the free 30% on the Ana. Like now they're really far behind actually just because of that one scatter arrow. I mean, it's not like the scatter arrow lost in the round or anything, but you're just, you're not, you should be trying to eat damage on offense right now, not give damage. Typical Hanzo pick. Just spamming. I mean, he's trying to use his ult now, but he has nothing really to combo. He can like try to just throw it off, but AKM's dead again. Again, he's not really a Reaper player. Reinforce gets a kill on Dean. That's pretty big. Um, but they have so many defensive ults right now. Like Lunatic High, even though they killed Re even though their Reinhardt's dead, Ooh, that's a big kill too as well. But this Blizzard man. Okay. This is, I feel like they're getting too ahead of themselves. Like Tavik gets a good kill or whatever on this Lucio. But you traded, like AKM died before this fight started. So like, let's just talk about their damage right now when you don't have AKM. AKM is dead. All of their damage is on wins, Reinforce and Tavik. And you just watch Tavik. Tavik didn't really do much. He, like he killed this Lucio, that's it. So like, there's still like three or four people on Lunatic High right here just waiting. Um, and you, how do you kill Zarya Roadhog May if you don't have a Reaper alive? Like, unless Tavik's hitting like a million arrows right now, he's not going to do anything. And he only kills the Lucio. So, okay, you killed the Lucio. Lucio dead. Cool. Um, Dean's respawning, but they still have these three heroes. They still have the Roadhog, they still had the Zarya, and they still have the May. 
So the only way they kill them is with AKM and Tavik. So Tavik gets the Lucio, big, that's cool, that's awesome. And then he gets the kill on the Roadhog, but he gets the kill on the Roadhog after they farmed half of, Re half of Rogue. And I don't know why Unko is still sitting on this nano boost. Like, he's afraid to use it now for some reason. I guess he didn't have any good targets. I guess they really just want to use the Death Blossom combo. But... The game is hard. Like, Tavik has to get more kills here. That's a good sleep dart. Ryu Zhang is, like, actually doing really well. Not Tavik's just dead, he's in no man's land. That's a really bad death because he's just staggered. Like now he's dead by himself. His whole team has to wait an extra 10 seconds. And that's an extra 10 seconds for Miro to build his Graviton. It's an extra 10 seconds for Eska to like get walls up. Yeah, I'm surprised teams don't run Farah into this comp and stuff. Like I feel like Farah against the May Reaper Zarya is really good. Even the Roadhog Reaper Zarya. So there's the power of the nano boosted Death Blossom. Like that's all it took. One good fight with the Graviton and the ults. He killed Nox though. This Ang is really good. This team's very good. I mean, regardless of whether or not Rogue is playing poorly, I would say that like Lunatic High is actually playing very well. Did Mendo just tell you guys to jump off the map with Zarya Bubbles to get free damage? I don't know if I would recommend that. So now ults advantage. Let's talk ults again. Talk ults again. So Lunatic High's on defense, they have nothing. They just, they, everyone just burnt. Like that was one of those times where the camera you kind of wish was like up in the skybox somewhere because it was one of those like, everyone throw all your ults and like six ults come out from one team and six ults come out from another team and then they create like this ball of fire in the middle. Um, that's kind of what just happened. The only person that still has ult is Nox. Everyone else used theirs. Reinforce are shattered, they death blossom, they gravitoned. They dragoned, they nano boosted. On the same same on the other side, they used everything except Graviton. They're gonna have Graviton soon. But when this happens, it's not that bad for defense because it means that Rogue's gonna have a hard time wiping them. Um Like it's not an easy fight now for Rogue to push because they don't have any real way to wipe Lunatic High. Like, unless Lunatic High really makes a big mistake. They just swapped the Roadhog for the Reaper, by the way. I don't know if anyone caught that. Or I just caught that. But um, now they're running, like, this super tanky, beefy comp, which I think is, like, strongest on King's Row. What you do is easy, Mendo is doing. I know, dude. Me and Mendo are going to start a casting org, but then he joined C9. So look at them, they're just dry pushing on defense, which I think is smart because they know that Rogue doesn't have ults. And they're taking a fight in Rogue spawn, which is, now they force, this is so silly. What is happening? So Nox just pops. This is so value. This is like very value actually for Lunatic High. Like they dry push, they push everyone in. They have no ults, they're not using anything. They don't care. And then, they force Nox to use Sound Barrier, but I don't know why he uses Sound Barrier. I feel like they should be able to get a kill in this choke without using Sound Barrier here. Um, but I think that this is a really good trade for Lunatic High, just from an ult standpoint. Like, you just force out this Sound Barrier, and what are they going to do with the back of the Sound Barrier? They're going to get Graviton. Yeah. Like, that Sound Barrier was not worth it at all. You could have lost that fight without Sound Barriering. Now you're just super far behind. Again, I don't think Rogue's playing particularly well on this in this series. Like, this is not the Rogue that played in E League. Like, they're like still tilted from E League, I think, because they're playing the exact same comp that Misfits ran. So maybe Lunatic High knew that. Maybe like, oh, the only matches that Rogue has lost recently is to Misfits, so we should just run Misfits' as comp. They got good cart time though at the end of the day because like they're on offense, they should get good cart time. Like after they get the kills, they have the spawn advantage and stuff. Good kill on reinforce, it's a big deal. Nano nano boosted Zarya. This guy's a god! Look at this guy! What? Then he gravitons! Alright, this is insane play actually. This is play of the game. If this didn't get play of the game at the end of the match, we'd be very upset. Go back a little bit, because I wanna watch that again in slow motion. I go back too far. Okay, watch this. 
So they push up. They backed out. I think Lunatic High did. They just backed out. Like they were like, okay, we're not going to win this fight. They just get out. Okay. But Rogue burned the sound barrier and then they got team wiped. It looks like Reinforce also used his Earth Shatter sometime during that. Um, but now they're looking for the Nano Boosted Death Blossom again. So this is insane, actually. Watch. They're just going to push into them because they don't care. They're like, screw you, Rogue. We're just going to push into you. They speed boost in, they blizzard. That's all I need to do. Blizzard, now they have Nano Boost. The Zarya is at 80% charge. Like Nano Boost the Zarya, fine, good. The Blizzard catches Reinforce, Reinforce is dead. Um, the Nano Boosted Death Blossom still hasn't happened yet. But now they just Nano Boost the Zarya. Look at the Zarya, he's not even tracking them. He's just going for the bubbles. Oh, he didn't get that kill. That was sick though. So now you traded Nano Boosted Death Blossom for Nano Boosted Zarya. Um, not the worst at all. Like that's a team wipe for defense. Team wipes on defense are like, you're just feeling good when you get a team wipe on defense. Like that is a really good team wipe for defense because they use like, Rogue is so dependent on that Nano Boosted Death Blossom doing work that they're not even like playing Overwatch anymore. They're just saying to themselves like, okay, we're gonna win because we had Nano Boosted Death Blossom, which is like not the mentality that you should be having because if you look at the way that that fight broke out, Reinforce died. I think Tavik died. Or someone died. Maybe it was Nox. It doesn't matter. Someone died here. And then all that they had left was these three players. And they still used the Nano Boosted Death Blossom. Like, meanwhile, Miro's just farming your team in the back. So now that you've... Now that you're just relying on this combo to win you every single fight, and you didn't win that fight, now Rogue is just, like, really boned. <laughs> Because now how do they win a fight? Like, they're going to have Sound Barrier. I think it looks like they have Sound Barrier. I can't tell if this guy has Sound Barrier. I hate this overlay. Um, but that was a really good trade. So, I don't know, man. So now Tavika is on McCree. I don't hate McCree against this comp. I think McCree is pretty good against this comp. But I still think... McCree Farah is probably the best counter to it that nobody's done yet. I think McCree Farah Mercy is better than Anna. This might be like too hypothetical, but this comp actually just relies on team fights. So and they don't really have flankers. Like if you just hide your Mercy, you can get reses off against this team. Um, I guess you don't really want to res into Blizzard, but I would agree that I think you now I think that a boosted Farah is like really good and I, that's why I thought Envy was gonna win against Misfits because I thought that they could just run Taimu on McCree and they'll spin on Farah but then they didn't they're so good that wasn't even nano boosted that was just a normal death blossom Join Discord and review with Flame. We can't watch together though, I don't think. This guy's actually nuts at Reaper. And they play around the Reaper so well, and they don't even care about the Death Blossom combo. Like, they just get kills without it. And that's impressive to me. Um, I don't know how they survive this. Like, I don't actually know how this guy just does this. Look at him, he's just sneaking around. He's a little ninja. Oh, that was before. Did I go back too far? What happened? Oh, yeah, this is when Tavik's on. I think I skipped forward instead of back. Yeah, I definitely went the wrong way. Okay, here's the push. I messed up. I went forward instead of back. So they have Sound Barrier, and they have Death Blossom, and that's it. Rogue has Graviton. But look at this guy, dude. Look at this Ninja Reaper. Is this one-sided game? It looks pretty one-sided. They play around. This Reaper is so good. Like, first of all, they don't even check upper at all. No one in, on Rogue is checking upper. You generally want someone to check over, upper. It takes a long time like to push upper, I would say. Like, for someone to go all the way up there and like check it out. It's not that fast. You don't really want to do it, but you should do it because if this guy gets his death blossom off, you just lose. 
And what's cool about this push, or like this defense actually, is that I don't know how, they don't even, like they just bubble him. They just play around the bubble. They're like, I don't need nano boost. Like he could have just waited five seconds for nano boost and just done this with nano boost, but he doesn't even need it because Nox doesn't have graviton. TV can't flashbang him through the bubble. And like they're all, this is like the most perfect setup for a death blossom I've ever seen. That's just a free triple kill. Sound barrier keeps him alive. But yeah, I mean, he did that without nano boost. So now they can nano boost him, or they can nano boost anybody. The good news for Rogue is they didn't burn any ults there, so they still have an advantage. Like, defense just burned two, but that's worth it. That was definitely worth it. We traded Sound Barrier and Death Blossom for a team wipe. Like, I'll take that trade. But now they have to make this Graviton work, and they have everything. They, they're probably just going to burn everything, because that's what Rogue seems to be doing. They'll just, like, use all of their ults at once. There's the Graviton, there's the Earth Shatter, there's the Sound Barrier, there's the Nano Boost. Zeke's dead. They can't lose this fight. They just burned 5 ults. Like, you cannot lose a fight where you burn 5 ults. But they just burn their entire economy down. Like, they have nothing. So... They traded their 5 ults for a nano boost. Like, I think Lunatic High is still winning in the ult department. I mean, as far as the ults go. But again, I think Rogue is just, like, not playing Overwatch. Like, they're playing it like a pub or something. This is weird. Like, AKM's gonna try to get a Death Blossom here, but they're not dumb. Like, nano boosted Death Blossom. I guess they could work, though. It should work. I don't know if they saw him, actually. You expect them to see him, but here we go. <laughs> die, die, die. <laughs> and they play around this really well, actually. So they see this coming, and they split. So um, they see AKM coming in from upper, and their reaction is to send their supports to the back and send their DPS to the front. Um, the nice thing about... Stop eating my chair. The nice thing about Anna is that she doesn't need to do anything to pop Nano Boost, you know? So once they came in, they saw him, and then three of them went in. Yeah, I, I agree that he shouldn't have used the ult. Because he did nothing with it. But while he's doing nothing with his ult, they pop their own Graviton, they pop their own Blizzard, and the, that's it. And they pop their own Death Blossom. So they ignore AKM completely, because AKM's not even chasing them. And then they trade their Nano... They, or no, they trade their Ana for a triple kill? Like, that's fine. Like, now what's, what's AKM even going to do here? Like, he's going to get farmed. I don't know why he tries to live here. This is a mistake. Is he going to die? I hope he dies. Yeah, he's going to die. Of course he dies. He should have died. Like, just jump off the map. Like, he just gave them more ult. That's a mistake. You can't just accept that you're dead. Just die. Every second counts, especially in a game like this, where if it goes to the second round, you need that extra second to cap the map. Life is hard, man. To be fair, both teams are close in ults. Yeah, I mean, teams are close in ults, but if you're on offense, you want to be ahead. Like, if you're on even ground with ults as defense, like, that's technically ahead. It's like, I don't know, like, let's compare it to Dota or something. Like, if both teams are even level and one team tries to push high ground, like, the team with the high ground will win. Like, this is kind of the same idea. Like, defense has the positional advantage, defense has the spawn advantage. Like, you don't want to push high ground against a team that's equal in worth to you. You wanna go when you have a massive advantage and they're just kinda of just like burning ults for the sake of burning ults. So like when you're behind on offense, you're super behind. And like they still can't get kills. The Zarya is cleaning up. Anna's killing Tavik. They're tilted. I can feel the tilt from here, man. That's a great analogy to Dota. <laughs> I, know my, I know my stuff, guys. I play games. Look at the Zarya, dude. The Zarya is just like living life. Like, now they have Graviton. They should be fine, actually. AKM is nowhere near his ult, and Tavik rage switched to Tracer. So, Graviton from Miro right here. Easy, easy fight. Even if they don't get kills, they're just burning time on the clock. This is fine. Look at this Zarya, man. The Zarya is at 50% ult again. 
They finally kill him, but he gets to 70. Tavika actually did a lot of work during that fight. Tavika and AKM came up pretty big. I expect them to finish the map, but it's still... Yeah, I expect them to finish the map, unless they can't kill this Mei. That's a huge sleep dart. Holy Christ. They missed time that, though. They could have gotten that kill for sure. Big panic ults. I don't think he needed to waste that there. We they kill Unko, but they trade for two. Yeah, two, they're gonna finish. I expected them to finish. Yeah. I mean, I expect them to finish, but AKM's ults haven't been too strong this entire tournament. Or, like, this game, anyway. They should have finished, though, like, definitely. I don't hate the Tracer against this comp either. Like, I don't find Tracer to be too bad against the Mei Reaper Zarya. It's just, hard. I mean, you get sniped by the Mei, but every hero gets sniped by the Mei. Yeah, I mean, over time, burn the clock, so now they don't get their free minute. He has yet to. So yeah, that's true. He should be zoning them by jumping off the map. Thank you to everyone that followed. Like, after Mendo subbed, everyone. I have so many more followers today, actually. Zarya went in too hard? Nah, Zarya's living life, man. If you have full charge Zarya, go get your kills. Go get your ult. I mean, they, they didn't need to Graviton when they Graviton Lunatic High. Like, they didn't actually need to use that Graviton there. I think that they just wanted to force a fight so that the clock would burn. Like, there was only 25 seconds left on the clock. So, why not just burn it? Um, I don't disagree with that. But ideally, and maybe if he still had that, it would have been fine. Would ammo and HP be easier to read at a glance while playing with this Korean text font? Um, I've been thinking about that actually as I've been watching this because I don't actually hate this font. I mean, it looks weird to me because it's not the Overwatch font, but um, it looks pretty good. Like, I don't hate this font. It's a little bland though for my liking. Switch to the Widowmaker just to see what they can do. Tavik's just gonna spam here. Pretty non intuitive or unintuitive, rather. I don't know what he's trying to do here. Let's get a wall. He just gets farmed! Guys, that can't happen. First of all, I don't like his positioning trying to spam there. Because you don't see anything. Like, you actually don't see anything. His only vision is them coming through the window. He can't see the choke. And then he gets... Like, that happens. Like, how does that happen? That's what I mean. Like, how did he not see the Roadhog? And, like, where was the Zarya bubble? Like, forget the... Maybe... I don't even think the Zarya bubble would have mattered. Because they have... Like, they would have just burnt through it, I'm pretty sure. Now, the Zarya bubble definitely would have mattered. Because there's no way that they burned the Zarya bubble without left-clicking from the Roadhog. So, like... That was just a feed. And now that they're down to Vik, like, this is just an easy push. Like, pushing with a May? Look at this. This guy can do whatever he wants. And esco has been pounding this entire tournament. Look at him just farming. He's like, okay. Mir wins. I got a present for you. And Wins has, like, no charge all the time for some reason. Like, look at Wins' bubble charge or whatever. His Zarya charge. Would you hate Junkrat? I don't like running Junkrat into May. I think running drunk. This guy is so good. I think running Junkrat into May is, like, a mistake. Not May. Junkrat into Zarya is a mistake. Defensive Junkrat's not bad against this comp because you can just keep spamming, but you don't want to play you don't want to play Junkrat because if you play Junkrat into Ana, you just give Ana ult all the time. Like every time you don't get a kill, you just give Ana ult. So that's why Junkrat's bad. Not, I mean, there's other reasons too because you fully charge Azaria, but as good as Lunatic High played, I don't know that they just played super well. Like they definitely looked good, but like I feel like Rogue just looked like lost. Like, super lost. So, I don't know, that's all I have to say about that. But that's the first map.